Hello everyone. Today's topic is data abstraction and data independence in DBMS. When I talk about DBMS, there is something called as a schema. A schema is the logical structure of the database. For example, the database consists of information about set of customers and the accounts and the relationship between them. So now the every overall structure which describes this is called as a schema. When I come to the schema, schema can be in two ways that is a physical schema and the logical schema. The database design at the physical level that is which talks about its storage structures like how you are going to, where you are going to store, how you are going to access them, random access, index sequential access, whatever it is talks about the physical schema. The logical schema is going to be the logical design or the database design at the logical level. That means you are talking about how it looks like once it is designed. What are the tables that you are going to create? How many tables? What kind of relationship between tables? That comes as your logical schema. Once you have the database, I may have an instance for it. A instance is always a actual content of the database at a particular point in time. So that is going to be the instance of a database. Now when I design the database, there are certain levels of abstraction which is maintained to ensure that the promised advantage of DBMS is fulfilled. That means I should be able to learn the differences between file system and the DBMS we have spoken about the data independence so which can be implemented through this levels of abstraction. So the database is structured or otherwise is designed in three levels known as user level which is also called as external view. We have the conceptual or the logical view and we have the physical level or otherwise we talk about the internal view. Now when I talk in terms of this, this particular schema architecture or we call it as a three tier architecture of the database where the topmost is called as the user view, the middle layer is the conceptual or the logical view and the bottom most layer is the physical view of the data structure. What does it represent? What does the physical layer talk about? The physical layer which is the lowest layer talks about the storage. That means which type of data or which type of storage media you are using? What is the access methods you are using? How many number of times or how often the database is going to be queried in? All these features tell you or will help you to design how and where it has to be stored. The conceptual view as we discussed in the form of data models tells you the logical structure. The corresponding data models as per your requirement will be selected in order to define the logical view. Here we talk about how many relations, how many tables and what are the relationship between their uh, between the tables, what are the constraints that has to be put in, all these things will be discussed or otherwise demonstrated at the conceptual level. Coming to the topmost level or we call it as an external view or the user view talks about different kinds of users who are accessing. Now here I provide a kind of abstraction. For example, when I talk about the attendance of a student. Every student has access to that particular database, but there will be a abstraction wherein each student will get to know only their attendance, only their marks. They cannot alter or view the other student marks or otherwise I talk about the college <coughs> faculty details. Say for example, salary, it is hidden from the general view or otherwise the salaries of the employees will be visible only to the corresponding head of the department. So that way the abstractions can be ma maintained depending upon the user in the topmost or the user level. Let me just take up an example and explain. Look at this topmost user view. We have got different kinds of user 
when I talk about the structure of a university database. <coughs> if the user is a new student, new candidate who wants to take admission, then he will have access only to the course information. What is the course offered? When is the enrollment beginning? Or what is the duration of the course? What is the fees of the course, etc., etc., etc. If the user is going to be the administrator, then he will have information about how many students enrolled into that course or if he is going to be the examination branch, how many students cleared that course, what is the CGPA they earned, all these details. So, we talk about user level view where an isolation is created and every user will have access only to the data which he is supposed to access. Coming to the conceptual schema, this talks about the logical structure. As I told you, there may be three tables here, <coughs> the students, the courses and the enrollment. Enrollment talks about the students who have joined into this course and what is the CGPA they have earned. The conceptual schema talks about the logical structure wherein here in this example, we may just consider there are three tables the students, courses and the enrolled. So, students details are stored, courses, course details are stored, enrollment talks about which student has taken up which course and what is the grade he has earned. Finally, coming to the lowermost schema which is called as the physical schema, here the relation stored as unordered files or may be indexed to files. So, it talks about the storage structure. Okay? Coming to the point on data independence. Now, what is the advantages of this levels of abstraction? It provides data independence. Each level is independent of each other. They are not interdependent. Though the data is accessed, they are maintained at separate levels because of which I can guarantee the data independence. So, what do you mean by data independence? The ability to modify a schema definition in one level without affecting the schema definition in the other level. So, a changes made at the physical structure or changes made to the physical structure will never impact your conceptual structure or conceptual uh, structure what you have designed. At the same time, I make changes in the conceptual structure, it will not impact the user. So, we define this data independence in two different levels. One is called as logical data independence, the other is physical data independence. The logical data independence talks about protection from changes in logical structure of the data. What does that mean? The ability to modify the logical schema without changing the external schema. Say for example, the CGPA uh, instead of 5 grade, I have made it as 10. That will not affect the way the uh, users access the data because they do have the same structure or otherwise I add an additional field as to the fee due. So, when I make the changes to the conceptual schema, I need not bother about the uh, external schema or otherwise user uh, queries need not be changed or user will not get affected because of that. Coming to the physical data independence, this is the protection from changes in physical structure of the data. What does that mean? The ability to modify the physical schema without changing the logical schema. The moment I decide to change switch over from my uh, sequential access to random access, the logical structure will not change. The way it is accessed is only going to change because of which maybe I can guarantee a faster access or I move the storage structure from a particular level to uh, from a particular storage media to another storage media that will never have an impact on the logical schema. This is called as data independence where each level is independent from the other level or the changes in one level will not impact the change in the other level. So, this is about data independence, one of the major features of your database.